you went to school with the guy who shot up Las Vegas. Do I have this right? Yeah, the uh, Steve Paddock. Um, I went to school with him from the second grade through high school graduation. And um, I've been holding this back, but I finally wrote about him because everyone's been asking why. But no one really wants to know why. And I'm going to say right off the bat, especially if you read my piece at gregpalace.com about Steve, explaining is not approving. Right, it's not you know, condoning. He destroyed hundreds of families forever besides the lives lost. Okay, there's no taking that away. But if you want to get Steve... Let me tell you about how we grew up and him and what happened to him. Okay. You know? Well, let me tell you. Okay, I went, as, as many places pointed out, we went to uh, school poly high. You understand where that is. It's in, the, it's in the anus of Los Angeles, literally. It's where the sewage uh, plant is. It's where the power plant and the city dump are. And um, we were meant to be losers. This was a, what they called a non-academic school. We didn't, you know, where the kids at Beverly Hills High and Hollywood High, they took advanced placement calculus and, and advanced placement English. We, we were required to take wood shop, electrical shop, metal shop, so we could run a drill press at General Motors. Steve and I sat together in drafting class, we were, that, which was required. Not English again, it was drafting class, so we could go work at Lockheed, which is exactly what he did until Lockheed closed down in 1988. Uh, and he took the buyout and left. Here's the problem. Steve was a math genius, okay? Mm -hmm. I was in the top class with him. But, but we didn't have even the class, the math classes that allowed him to even apply to UCLA, let alone a place like Stanford or MIT where he should have been. And, you know, and it, by the way, it's not minor that my school was uh, uh, becoming a majority Chicano school. So it was poor whites. A lot of brown, poor, very poor brown people. And we were supposed to work at General Motors down the, down the road or at Lockheed. And after we got out of Vietnam, you know, if we had right. uh, enough limbs to do the job. Right. And, um, you know, he was scarred. You know, there's PTSD, which not only comes, you know, we understand it from Vietnam vets. How about the victims of the class war? This guy had no chance. So he, he went to the only schools that he could qualify for, a local college, uh, L.A. Valley College, uh, now uh, Cal State Northridge. You know, it's got his Lockheed job, but he should have been at Stanford. He should have been a special kid who he had a lot to, to offer, and it was his dreams were crushed, destroyed, and he just used his big brain to just spend 14 hours a day in front of a video screen, numbing that brain, using his math wizardry to try to, um, you know, make 1% on the house in, in Vegas and in Reno. It was sad. And, and the idea that he's rich, by the way, was ridiculous. He lived in a, in, in a you know, in a crappy little house uh, outside of Reno. Um, he was a loser. He wasn't a professional gambler. He was a loser, a victim of this class war, and there's a lot of bitterness. And if you understand Steve's story, and again, not approving, you'll understand the Trump voters, too. Right. But this also, uh, the, the other cautionary uh, thing that I would add here yep. is that what you're suggesting may or may not be the major influence that caused him to turn into a homicidal maniac. Um, yeah, I didn't but, turn, by the way, I haven't killed anyone from a... Exactly. Uh, you know, that, that was where I'm I was not going. standing up on a motel uh, window uh, with high-velocity uh, weapons, you know. Right. Uh, I, I went a different way. In fact, the experience drove me in a very different direction. My film, by the way, The Best Democracy Money Could Buy, uh, Shailene Woodley acting as a spirit. It's kind of a dream scene. I actually go back to Sun Valley. I go back to the street where um, Steve and I grew up. And we go down San Fernando Road, and all those guys who worked at GM, which closed down, at Lockheed, which closed down, not all of them, but many of them ended up, you'll see in the film, in these mobile homes, uh, you know, semi-homeless uh, along the railroad tracks on San Fernando Road. The class war in America has a lot of victims, and we don't like to talk about it. And, you know, uh, that's why people strike out. It, again, it's... You know, right. uh, I don't agree with it, but understand, this is what drives me, you know, to basically tell, you know, my whole thing has been hunting down the, the billionaire uh, the malefactors. You know, creeps yeah. 
that did this to us, that make money off this. You know, whether they yesterday talked about John Paulson, uh, the finance vulture, rich kid went to Harvard um, and drowned Puerto Rico. I mean, he's the guy that, that made it so weak that it was easy to for the systems there to blow down. He is a finance vulture, which has been attacking Puerto Rico now for years. Um, he's in my film too. That's what I do. I go after these guys. So that's my way of, of dealing with it. I, I don't I don't pick people that go to a concert and shoot bullets at them. I, I fire words at the billionaires who did this. Right. Right. Remarkable. Greg, uh, thank you for sharing that story with us. I mean, that, and and I'm not. I, I need to digest that for a little bit. But that's that's that's. And people can read the whole story over at gregpalace.com. Um, can we're going to hit a break here in about two and a half minutes? Um, can I, a couple of quick questions for you sure. off off that topic, if that's all right? Yeah. About voting rights. Um, is there that, any that, way? That's to... word, by the way, I've said just so you know, Tom, I have said that. Vote suppression is class war by other means. So yes. go ahead. It's the same. It's the same topic. Yeah, so okay, you're ahead. absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Um, is it possible for citizens of any particular state to get a list of all the voters who have been scrubbed from that state, so that they can notify them that they've been scrubbed from the voting rolls by Chris Kobach's cross check? We are working with the ACLU, the the Civil Rights Center, great class action attorney Jeannie Meyer. We are trying to get the darn actual scrub list. I know that the Democratic Party of Virginia has been given a list of the, of the people scrubbed in Virginia. They are holding on to this. You know, I had to work uh, five months to get their hit list, the 7.2 million so-called suspects of, of double voting. But the number, we figure about 1.1 million were actually scrubbed from the voter rolls. We have been filing all kinds of legal actions to get those names because we know that there are not 1.1 duplicate voters. Uh, that's insane. But this, I'm telling you, this is what elected Donald Trump besides the white rage. Yeah, yeah, uh, no doubt. And, so and, and then this the, really hard, believe me. And right. Believe and, the, me. And, 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 any, and all of you putting on pressure to get those lists out of the hands of these mostly Republican secretaries of state, those should be public documents. If you're taking away yeah. someone's right to vote, that's not, that's not a privacy matter. That's not a government secret. Right. And, and voting yeah. rolls, to, to begin with, are, are public documents. So yeah, then right. in, so in the four, 40 seconds or so we have too. left, Greg, um, why, is, why has the Supreme Court never found an affirmative right to vote when there's all these different places in the Constitution that grant the right to vote? It's implied in the Constitution. And I'll tell you, you got nine black robes, uh, and it's a, it's a political agency, uh, a switch of, of uh, robes from uh, a Roberts and Scalia to something more progressive, you know, another Thurgood Marshall instead of a Clarence Thomas, and suddenly the right to vote will reappear. It's, mm. it's uh, yeah, it's there. So it's the, because I've been saying for some time, I think, you know, the, the Supreme Court could have fixed this a long time ago simply by finding, even in the, the amendment that gave 18-year-olds the right to vote, which is probably the most universal of all of them, uh, could clearly find affirmative right to vote, which would blow up a lot of these Republican efforts, but the Supreme Court refuses to do that. Uh, anyhow, Greg, thanks so much for being with us today. You're welcome, Tom. It's always great talking with you. Greg Palace's website, gregpalace.com. Please check it out.